Uh, my name's James Greening. Um, that's my English name. I, I have a, a native name as well. It's Blue Sky. And um, I guess what got me going in art is tied in with, with who I am. And that's, uh, I'm a 60s scoop uh, person. So I grew up uh, looking native, but not knowing language, culture, identity. And I was in a, in a white world. So I really, really didn't know who I was or how I fit. It was during the pandemic uh, when I was at home, like most of us, and uh, I got to just drawing. Uh, I don't know how it happened. Uh, I've never been an artist type person. I can say I'm, I'm a red sailed millwright. Uh, I, I made things with metal and I was an oddity in that I always wanted to paint my own stuff when it was finished. I would always want to paint my stuff, but a lot of the guys thought it was beneath them to, to be a painter, but I, that was one of my favorite parts. It was a little difficult finding exactly what my, my people uh, did. The, there's, there is a separation as a result of the 60 scoop and the residential schools. And it, it was very effective uh, on our particular reserve, Kakawishtahau. Uh, of separating us from our culture and language and identity. It was, I didn't know really much at all. Uh, I did get in contact with my mom and she didn't know a whole lot either. She knew more than me, of course, but uh, again, she went through, she was in residential school. Her mother was residential school. Her mother before that was residential school and it goes on. So there was a great loss in, in art for one, and that's what I was pursuing. But luckily, I came across a, an auction and I found uh, a piece that I really gravitated to. And uh, it was by Mark Anthony Jacobson. And he did a painting uh, called The Birth of Morisot. And, and I loved it. It was a two piece set. So I started doing some research and uh, I found out I love Morisot's work. I was going, man, this is genius. I love it. And it was two dimensional. So for me being a, a beginner, um, it, it made sense that I could pursue something like that. So that's what I did. I even got a hold of uh, Mark Jacobson and asked him for some help. And we were able to arrange a very brief, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, mentorship, I guess. And, uh, you know, he, pointed me in the right directions and stuff and reassured me, yeah, this is, this is art that, that you can do. And uh, I was very cautious about cultural appropriation, of course. So the Haida wasn't my, my art, but it inspired me to start. So that was, that was a real benefit there. So uh, I, I spent some time with uh, Mark Jacobson and, and uh, started developing a style, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm kind of all over in what I paint on. <clears throat> um, I, I started with the canvas, of course, and, and acrylics, and I used uh, some painting pens, uh, I don't know, Liquitex uh, paint pens for the small stuff because it was easy to, to navigate, and I just needed to paint every day. So that's what I did. I painted pretty much every day something uh, just to keep busy. I'm very thankful that I have an opportunity to carry on in the woodland style. Uh, like I said, it fits my uh, abilities and creativities. I deal with color mainly. I think it projects feeling very effectively. Uh, shapes, uh, simple. Sometimes I've kind of simplified some of my shapes lately and they've had a greater effect, it seems. But I also do um, drums. So I work off of um, uh, different types of rawhides. I make them and then I paint them. So that was another thing with the creativity. I was able to make these things. Uh, the only thing I didn't make was the, the hoops because it's just it was so time consuming. I figured, nah, somebody else can do it. I went with this dot style. I seen, um, oh no, I forget her name now. 
Anyway, she just does some amazing work with, with the dot style. What it's supposed to represent is beadwork. I seen some of her work and I said, I have to try that because that's just so beautiful. There are a lot of work. My eyes get all screwy after doing a day of that because uh, yeah, that's just how that is. And then I do other drums, I put other stuff on there. This big one here, that one's getting ready uh, for, I'm gonna put something on it, so. Um, I tend to make them, let them sit for a while, make sure everything's nice and there's no surprises before I paint because I'd hate to have to paint, or I'd paint something and then something happened. Uh, even if it got a little bit loose, um, it's not as usable. Uh, and I try to sell usable drums. This art has been a healing journey too. Not that long ago, I was uh, actually uh, at home for the last eight years. Uh, I got hurt at work. Something broke in in the brain with the uh, the ear, and the eyes were telling two different stories. Uh, vestibular mismatch, they call it. So I was really out to lunch, but that's gotten somewhat better now. Uh, and I think that the art had a lot to do with it. It relieved the stresses. I still have the ear pains that, that happen, you know, every six weeks or so, but um, yeah, I, I feel better about the whole thing, um, having the ability to just draw and paint and, and be creative. I did a couple of paintings here. These are actually quite large. There's five in total, but here we have three. And uh, I wanted to kind of draw myself in my ear there. There's some birds and they're singing. And so it's representative of me hearing uh, the sounds and, and uh, connections of na nature. And then they come out, you see them come out my arm, out the brush. And then the next painting is, is some birds in connection with the with, uh, grandfather's son. So the, the depiction on that one is that uh, there are seven teachings of the grandfather. They're all honorable things. They would be um, attributes that any one of us would love to have, one being love, wisdom, uh, honor, respect. And I wanted to draw something like that to show that some of the things that uh, were being called evil were, were very honorable. Um, when, when I was growing up, we were always told that the native culture was, was evil. They were like devil worshippers or something like that. So I kind of wanted to bring that out and, and show that, you know, there were some very, very honorable things that were being mislabeled and used to suppress and, and crush and, and remove so that they, there could be a taking without guilt. I wasn't sure how I wanted to sign my name. I, I definitely wanted to use my blue sky and I put it in English, blue sky. And, and one day I thought, well, Norval Morso always did the, uh, the Cree syllabics for his name, uh, Copper Thunder. So I tried uh, doing that. Um, and it's a little tough, but no, it's a lot tough to try to figure out the way my specific people from Kakawishtahau would spell it and and it was tough finding anybody that that really knew how to say my name um and each time i did it was a little different uh, so at the end of the day i just went to a dictionary online and i got uh it was for plains cree and uh, i used that i did that on a painting where i did blue sky and that because I figured, hey, I'm gonna have to transition this so people will know who it is, right? And I was at a market and it was a little original piece that I was selling at the market and an older gentleman came by, he was in his 80s. And then he pointed at it, at the name with pride. The language. It means a lot. It develops in how you think. And that's what touched him. 
obviously that's what touched me. It's it's a, a way of looking at the world around you, and then you actually speak it. It's a lot different than English. The English language is very effective in minimizing and industrializing. That's that's what it does. That's what it's for. Um, these languages. I don't think I'll get my language back. Uh, I'm a little late in the game. My hearing isn't quite good enough, but I'll be able to get phrases, and that's wonderful. That'll be great. Uh, I'm really encouraged by all the different young people coming up and speaking their language fluently. Like they just, they just go, and it's wonderful to see. Uh, where I see myself going, I, I want to encourage young people. I came from a meeting this morning uh, where I'm gonna bring some young people to do some native painting on some windows uh, down on the key. There's gonna be an indigenous market. Uh, so yeah, I wanna encourage those kids to to get to work, to, to know that their cultural work is important. And uh, so that, you know, that's a wonderful thing. When I was looking for a teacher, to learn my um, art, cultural art. What I found was students constantly. I found, you know, 20 students before I found a teacher that would help me. Uh, and that was just me asking, hey, do you know anybody that does this? And they said, no, but I'm looking too, right? So there is a definite need for that. And I would love to be able to help other people move in directions that gets them, you know, to a, a better understanding. Uh, you know, I can share what I know, but you know, I don't know that much. I'm just learning myself. So, but I can I can teach what I know. That much I can do. Uh, I can encourage people uh, to search. Uh, so that's that's what I see myself doing. I guess I want to be knowledgeable enough to help other people find their way.